episode number one of Beardy Crocker, Cooking Without a Net. In this episode, we will learn how to make pho, or as it's properly pronounced in Vietnam, pha. In any case, simple recipe. Uh, stay tuned, we'll show you how to get this all done. All right, so the first thing we gotta do here uh, the first step, um, we're going to take uh, a large onion, it's okay Yuki, you go on out there, take a large onion, just cut the ends off here a little bit, get that, get those onion peels off, you'll probably see Yuki in and out of the kitchen here, she likes to, to work with me here, for those that know Yuki, you'll know how cool she is. All right, so anyways, I'm gonna fight here. As a, as a touring musician, of course, I always just assumed that food just showed up. You know, everywhere I went, there was just food there. I go to a festival, there was food there. And of course, last March, uh, once the uh, situation happened here, and I came off the road, the gigs were gone, I actually had to learn how to make stuff for myself. Um, and so in doing so, learning how to peel onions properly, <laughs> get stuff ready, stuff that I've never really done before. Um, all right, so step one is, is we're gonna take the onion, now we're gonna make, make it into sections, about maybe an inch thick. And on this particular onion, we can get four out of there, uh, four, four distinct uh, things here. Peel that one off, make sure there's no brown stuff left on the onion. You do this, okay? So very simple, get those ready. And then we wanna take a generous amount of ginger and cut some cut some slices. And slices maybe, maybe like a half inch thick, if you can see this in the camera. Maybe, you know, get a few of those in there. Maybe, you know, no real number, maybe five or six. If you got lots of ginger, you know, make some more. You see my expert knife work. I hate knives, man, I hate knives. All right, so this part of it is prepped right now. Also, the, the next part of this, and I'm just waiting for the water to boil over here. Um, we have to make a broth, uh, a base. Uh, in traditional fat, you, you would use a beef broth. Um, I'm going to use Nord's beef broth today. Um, and this is a bulk thing because I've been making a lot of food these past couple of months. Uh, and what we need to do is make a base. So this actual recipe calls for eight cups of broth um, uh, out of beef. You can use chicken. And of course, you might say to yourself, well, Dan, uh, you know, my trailer park doesn't have those kind of things in the, in the convenience store. Well, you can also, if you're feeling, you know, if you're feeling in trouble, you can't get this done properly, you can use an onion soup mix as the base. Uh, that's a, an alternative part of the recipe that can be done, but you can use an onion soup uh, base. Uh, for this one, we're gonna do a proper beef broth. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll get right to the next section on what we're going to do once I get this water boiling. All right. Water's almost boiling. I've gone ahead and preheated this beautiful cast iron pan. Uh, I've never cooked with cast iron until December of last year. And uh, at 55 years old, I've sure missed out on a lot. Uh, I'm a cast iron king now. It's a cool thing to get into. If you've got cast iron, you already know what I'm talking about. Okay, so what we're gonna do here now, uh, we'll go to the onions first. Like I said, the, the frying pan is about half, it's a gas stove, the heat's about half. What we wanna do with these onions, and these are in a disc, as you recall, uh, these are, we're just gonna put these in the pan to char them. You want them to be burnt on either side. That's going to take a, a few minutes to do that. Um, and also we want to do the same thing with the ginger. You know, uh, you might want to use bigger slices of ginger. Uh, 
when you can. Uh, my ginger right now is kind of small. It doesn't really matter. There's no rules to it. Put the ginger in there. Face it out in the pan. And we're just going to let that sit and, and char. Um, you want it really to get to, to be blackened. I mean, I don't think you'll be able to get the ginger, uh, the ginger blackened, but the onions at the tops on either side should be blackened up pretty good. Um, there's a reason for this, and you'll see why once we get going. But mostly, it's to add smoky flavor. Now, at the same time, we're going to use our good old Knorr beef broth. Now they say for this uh, recipe here, and for this can of beef broth, uh, you want to have just a rounded teaspoon for every cup of water. This is an eight cup recipe um, for this particular, for this particular uh, dish. You can, it doesn't really matter. You can be close, you don't have to measure. I tend to measure things, of course my partner points out to me, they don't have to be measured, and she's always a way better cook than me. In the meantime, I am gonna measure this just cause uh, it's what I do. So essentially for this, we need to have eight rounded teaspoons in this, in this pot of broth. Like I said, if you can't get a hold of the beef broth or the, the chicken broth, uh, you can use chicken broth. You can also get away with some good old onion soup mix. It works. We did it last week. It tastes pretty good. Okay, so we'll just stir this broth, let it cook for a little while, and we'll let these onions cook a little bit. Um, and it says it'll take some time. You want to get them blackened up on both sides. Uh, so once we get done uh, that part of it, uh, we'll be right back and we'll get to the next step in making this foe. Fa. We're almost ready to go to the next step here. You'll see that the onions now are charred up pretty good. And that's how you want them to look. You don't want to burn them, just char them up. You know, char up the the ginger a little bit. Uh, the beef broth is now ready to go. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to just preheat this pan. Uh, and we need four ingredients now. We need whole cloves, some star anise, some cardamom pods. These are Thai cardamom pods. Some uh, coriander seed. And a little bit of cinnamon. Um, now what, we, what we're going to do here, we're just going to let this pot sort of heat up. Uh, get her going here a little bit. Just check this, maybe shut the heat off of these onions now. I get a bit confused when there's like three or four things happening here. I've really got to pace myself and, <laughs> and be careful. So as we wait, as we wait for this pot to heat up, what we're doing here is we're going to put the dry ingredients in here and let it smoke for about two to three minutes before we add the broth and the onions and the ginger. Uh, what this does, I think, is open up the flavor, uh, op opens it up a little bit, gives it a pleasant uh, uh, aroma. I was going to say smell, but that sounds uh, aroma. Let's use the word aroma. It opens up a little bit, gives it a nice aroma, also opens up the flavor for the uh, for the the fa when we get there. Okay, so what we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna take now. Now these uh, there is a recipe. You don't quite have to follow the recipe. Um, I guess the first thing we should talk about is you're gonna say, well, well, geez, Dan, uh, it, it, in my neighborhood, Frank's General Store doesn't have star anise, doesn't have cardamom pods or coriander seed. All this stuff can be gotten at the bulk barn. Unless you have an Asian grocery store, we're lucky in, in Kitchener, we have a couple of Asian grocery stores. Otherwise, the good, old barn, uh, the good old bulk barn has this stuff. Okay, this recipe, it calls for five star anise. 
those who you don't know what a star anise was, either did I. But that's what that looks like. All right, so uh, it calls for five, and you know what? I'm feeling kind of feeling kind of edgy today. I'm going to put six in. Okay. Calls for two cardamom pods. Oh. I'm going to put three in. Now it wants four whole cloves. I'm going to put five in. I'm feeling kind of like an anarchist today. Now, none of these, none of these ingredients, the more you put in, it's not going to wreck the recipe. It's kind of up to you. Now, one mistake I made last week, <laughs> because I'm Beardy Crocker, I thought that the recipe actually calls for cinnamon sticks. <laughs> I thought I could just put cinnamon in there. So I had this all heated up, smoking well, put the cinnamon in, burnt the whole thing. Cinnamon pretty much burns on contact uh, if you put it to a, uh, to a hot surface. So cinnamon sticks, uh, we don't have to use the cinnamon sticks now. What we'll do is we'll add some cinnamon to the broth uh, once we get the broth going. So a teaspoon, excuse me, one tablespoon of coriander seed. Might go just around and put that in there. Now, so we're just gonna let that heat up, smoke for a while. Um, the idea is being, like I said, it'll open up the flavors a little bit. I mean, I know you can't smell it there, but you can start to hear the seeds crackling a little bit, you know, if you can, if you can hear it on the camera. Turn it out a little bit here. It smells pretty good. Once you do this, you'll be going, oh man, that smells, that smells pretty good. Um, so we'll just let that go for another minute or so. Um, not much we can do here now. You know. That was pretty good. It smells like that. It smells like that perfumey smell that you would maybe get at a, a real pho restaurant. Like I said, the cinnamon sticks thing, that's a problem. I ruined, uh, I ruined a little batch of this last week by putting the cinnamon straight in, not realizing what it would do. So we'll, we'll put cinnamon in after this. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, we'll add the broth to it. Just let that boil in there for a sec. Now we want to bring this. We want to bring this to a boil. Um, we'll dump in the, the charred onions now. And again, the charred onions uh, really helps with the flavor. Uh, at the the recipe says that you're supposed to remove them when you're done with the with the fa. Uh, when you're ready to eat the pho, I don't. I leave them in there. It's pretty good. You know, and one thing about this recipe, you can keep adding to this. If you get down to, like, this much soup left, you can add more stuff and keep doing it like they do in Thailand. There, there's families there that have had the same soup pot for 50 years that's, that still has some soup in it. Um, they, just, they just keep adding to it and keep cooking. So we're going to let this boil for a little bit, bring it down to a simmer, and then we'll move to the next step. We'll just check in on the uh, broth here. Um, set the heat now down to uh, medium low. I'm just gonna let this cook for about a half an hour. Uh, I've added some cinnamon to it, about a half teaspoon, um, just for flavor. Actually, I may have gone a little bit too hard on the cinnamon, but I don't think it'll hurt it. Um, but but I maybe a half teaspoon if you don't use the cinnamon sticks. Uh, the cinnamon's always been the bane of my existence, no matter how I use it. I tend to screw things up. Okay, so one thing that's not on the recipe that I like to add is some uh, carrots, just carrots. You don't have to put too many vegetables in this thing. 
Uh, since we're not using chicken or fish or beef or any other kind of meat, this is kind of basically a vegetarian uh, pho. Uh, I like to put some carrots in. And if you have one of these cool little carrot cutters, you can really kind of get fancy. I'll show it on this camera over here. This kind of makes your carrots kind of cool. Don't, uh, don't cut them too thick. Just nice, you know, keep them thin. Then we'll just we'll get those ready. I'm going to put a full carrot in on this one. Do you like carrots, you? Here, sit up. Up. Good girl. <laughs> so we'll chop a few more carrots up here. Show you some dog tricks. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Wait. Wait. Hey. Whoa. Somebody, somebody's breaking the rules here. Anyways, let's keep moving here. I like to have carrots in the in the bowl here. For me, it's just a, a nice flavor. You could probably put anything in there if you wanted to. Depends on what you want to do. Uh, they do have lots of carrots over in Thailand. What they don't have is potatoes. And that's why I had to learn how to, to cook here. Because uh, I love potatoes. Being an Irishman, you can't get potatoes. That's a delicacy over in Thailand. All right. Well, to move this along. So I'm going to put these carrots in now. Um, doesn't really matter when. You can probably do it now just to let them cook a little bit. Um, cover it back up. We'll check in on this in a few more minutes. All right, while we're waiting on the, the fa over there, and we'll go back to the prep side here. Um, and the three things you're going to need to really tie this dish together. Unsalted peanuts. Fresh basil, if you can get it. Um, again, this is pretty prevalent in an Asian grocery store. Some of the bigger grocery stores have it. Um, it's important. It really, really uh, gives this dish a wonderful flavor. And the final thing is, is um, some fresh cilantro. Cilantro is good with any kind of soup, so fresh cilantro. So what we'll do here is I gotta wash this off first. I'm just gonna grab a few sprigs here, not too much. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe that much. Save the rest here. That there. Sorry if my back is to you once in a while. This is sort of a sort of a trailer park uh, video setup here. Um, and then the of course, we'll have the fresh basil, which is very, very key. Uh, I didn't realize how key it was until I didn't have it one time and realized how much that I had actually missed it. Okay, so we'll take a little basil. That should be one spray should be enough for this for this particular session. Put the rest away here. Okay. Stuff it all in there. All right. Now, so make sure you wash this stuff, should be washed, everything should be washed, especially these days. You don't know what's going on, so wash it all up. Cold water would be fine. Okay, now we'll just let that sit and dry. Now the final thing is, is, the, is with the unsalted peanuts. You can have salted peanuts too if you want, but I go with unsalted. Um, very important it's 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 kind of uh, I mean if peanuts peanuts in Thailand are kind of like ketchup to me here in Cambridge I love ketchup um, with these kind of dishes it's always good to have uh, some peanuts I tend to stock up I'll have a little peanut container um, but you know you can just chop those up medial labor here you know just chop them up chop them up chop them up 
Once those are ready, you can put those in a little serving dish as I will show you towards the end. And then with the with the fresh uh, with the, the fresh basil, we're just gonna pull the leaves off. You don't want the stems in there, just the leaves. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the leaves off. Get them ready here. All right, we'll sprinkle this into the soup later as I'll, as I'll show you show you how, right? And then with the remainder of the coriander, uh, you can chop that up as well, and you can include the stems. The stems are good, won't hurt you at all, tastes pretty good. You know, chop all that up. I'll have this prepared towards the end here, it's so ready to go. But this is something you can do while you're waiting for for that broth and and that broth should simmer for about a half hour half hour or so somewhere in there there's no written rules but in and around that area okay so uh the next step will be draining that broth when it's ready and then we'll get down to making the noodles so hang in okay we're getting pretty close now that broth is starting to look pretty good so we'll just finish up quickly here uh, just getting the peanuts ready and we can move on part of it. You want to get these peanuts chopped up pretty fine. You know, get them chopped up, chopped up pretty fine. Okay. What's going on? You gotta go for, you gotta go outside? No? You wanna go for pea? No? Okay. You can start talking to me. All right, and then we and then we've got the leaves pretty much ready here, as you can as you can see, we're pretty much ready to go here. We'll just set all that aside, and then I'll show you the next step. Come here, you. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? <laughs> All right, so that's good to go. Now, here's here's the fun part here, and this could be uh, one of the difficult parts for you, depending on where you live and are, and are located. Yes, Yuki. What? No. Go. You go. Go. Okay. So, what you want to do is have a nice rice stick vermicelli. Um, if you can't find this uh, in your local grocery store, if there's no Asian section, excuse me, Apparently you can see some that I didn't. Uh, so you want a, a rice stick vermicelli. Um, get these in all Asian grocery stores. Uh, if you're having difficulty finding it <laughs> and you need to go back over to Frank's convenience store, you can really take this into the trailer park and you can use spaghetti. Ideally, sp spaghettini, uh, it works, it's pretty good. Not as cool as the uh, rice stick vermicelli, but it's very, very functional pasta. I've done it, uh, tastes pretty good, you know? Um, okay, so stay tuned. We'll get right up to the next step here shortly. All right, we're closing in on it now. So what we wanna do here is we're gonna take the flow now, fa, over to the sink. Now I've set up here in the sink, as you can see, another pot with a strainer. In the pot and what we want to do here is strain out all the seeds and and other things that that we don't want in the actual soup okay so gently gently pour that in there now of course like an idiot the first thing I realized is that I should not have put the carrots in yet because now I got carrots mixed in with that stuff that's okay. We'll, we'll sort this out as we go here. These are lessons learned because I am uh, somewhat of a uh, idiot cook. Okay. So anyways, at this point, right now we have all the broth, uh, the actual uh, broth in there. Uh, we have all the other stuff in here. What I'm going to do is come back over here now. I'm going to get these carrots and uh, carrots in here. Really shouldn't have done it this way. This is somewhat of a mess. But, however, you, lessons that you learn as you go here. Um, 
Okay, so ultimately what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take care of this first mistake that I've done here. And welcome to my cooking show. Uh, but ideally, ideally what you want to do here is get the carrots out. You can keep the onions in the soup. Take the onions out. Put the ginger back in. Basically, you're just leaving out now the cardamom pods, the uh, coriander seed, the star anise. You're getting rid of all that. I'll sift through this stuff uh, and be right back. mini disaster. This is what happens when you cook without a net. Okay, so I've got rid of all the seeds on the carrots. So for the future, if you decide to put something in, wait till this step. So we're going to put the broth back into the big pot. Now, we're going to just let this uh, cook on a very, very low heat. We're going to start tasting to see where we're at. In the meantime, we're going to get ready a, a pot here of boiling water uh, so that we can do the vermicelli noodles in. Um, I thought if you've never seen anybody make a pot of water before, now's your chance. All right, so we'll get that started up. Now let's just take, now there's a part here, we wanna add a, a tablespoon of brown sugar to, uh, to this and, uh, and some fish sauce. It, basically, basically fish sauce helps with the flavor and brown sugar. And they can't find the brown sugar. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. All right, found the brown sugar. And you probably don't have to use this if you don't want to. It's called for the recipe. It kind of depends what your thing is. You know, I'm just gonna use a little bit, just not so much a tablespoon. You know, my pancreas doesn't work so good anymore. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. And then it calls for two teaspoons of fish sauce. You can measure out two teaspoons of fish sauce or you can just do what I do. That's yeah, probably pretty good right there. Now, we're just gonna stir that around a little bit. Stir it a little bit here. And then, and then we'll take a taste and we'll see where we're at here. This is, this is the spot right now. And that tastes pretty good. Um, maybe just a touch more fish sauce. All right, that should be good right there. Taste that. Pretty good, we'll just let this simmer some more. Now don't forget, I did put the ginger and onions back in. Ginger can just stay in there. You don't want to eat it. The onions you can eat when we actually eat the soup. Ginger can always stay in there. The onions are onions. Onions are great on anything. So leave them in there. Okay, and in the meantime, we're boiling up the water now, getting ready for the noodles, but we're getting super close now. Uh, so hang in there. We're almost at the supper table. All right, we're just before we do these noodles. Now, uh, these are the uh, rice stick vermicelli. I find to feed two people that the half of the deck is the appropriate size. That's enough noodles for two. That's a pretty good meal for two, actually, maybe even less. Um, depending on how you like to, to do it. Um, so we're just gonna get those things in there. Not easy to work with, but once you get them in there, uh, they're fine. Now these noodles, probably about five minutes. You'll wanna taste them, check them a couple of times. Maybe you like it a little more al dente. Um, I like them uh, a little bit chewy, not too subtle, but chewy. So, so once the water's boiling, probably about five minutes or so. And you check on that though, don't set the timer, make sure you check it every once in a while. All right, we're at the final stage now. We're just gonna, uh, the rice noodles have been cooking now for about 
five minutes or so. Um, I think they're about ready. We'll just give them the, the old test here. Sure are sticky. Yeah, we're gold. We are gold. Okay, so. As it always is, every utensil I need in this kitchen, I cannot find. Give me a sec. Oh, there we go. All right, so what we're gonna do, because we wanna have this hot today, we don't have to wash these, uh, it's okay. Sometimes, some people like to wash noodles, I just like to go with the direct hot water in. So we're gonna just use my little thing here, get it into the, let the water drain off. No, normally we would use a colander on this, but, but uh, we wanna keep them hot if we can, so I just tend to scoop them like this, let the water drain off. Try not to burn myself when I'm doing it. You know, these noodles aren't the easiest thing to work with, that's for sure. A pain in the ass, actually. Okay. Let's see, we've got noodles hanging everywhere here. <laughs> A few more over here. Now, the rest will just strain out here. And put them in, as long as we got most of the water, most of the water out, we'll strain, strain the rest out here. There we go, Not too many noodles left there. All right. And now, the best part. Looks, the soup looks pretty good. Good to go there. It smells pretty good. Okay. So what we'll do, uh, we're just going to scoop some some of the foe broth straight into the noodles. Now, once again, you don't want to have the ginger in there. You want to leave the ginger in the soup. Everything else in here is safe to put in. You just scoop it in there. Get the onions in. Maybe put the ginger, put the ginger back. Leave that ginger in there because it, 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 this bowl will taste even better tomorrow after sitting sitting overnight. Almost guarantee you that. Okay. A bit more over on this one right here. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Take a few more here. Okay, now to, final, to finalize this, there's two other things you need. Depending on how you like to do it. Now, uh, for this particular recipe, I did not use any chili peppers. I used, uh, I basically used, uh, well, I haven't used anything. Um, what we're going to do is we can add the hot sauce in later if you like. But one of the key ingredients is the hoisin sauce. Um, so what we'll do now, um, I'm trying to think because I don't know how. I'm going to make my bowl and then my partner, she can make hers the way she wants it. But I'll show you what to do here. So what I like to do here is a little bit of hoisin sauce. A little bit of sriracha. All right. And then we'll take a little bit of the, the, the uh, cilantro that we had chopped up earlier on. We'll put, put some of that in, just sprinkle it in, just a nice little garnish there, not too much. You know, a little bit, a little bit. And then a few of these fresh basil leaves. Fresh basil leaves, you know. And then of course we would add the peanuts in right at the end. I'll do that now. Just put a few, a few little peanuts in here. There you go. Nice little mix. And then we'll stir that around with the chopsticks. Essentially that's it. I'm gonna just bring the phone over to you so you can take a look at these the way they look. So I'm gonna sort of just walk over here. 
But this is what this will look like at the end of your supper. At the beginning of your supper. <laughs> so, so you can use, use a few chopsticks on it. Um, so you can use chopsticks to eat this with, stir it all around, get it, get it ready for you. So that's it. It's as simple as that. Very simple. I had a couple of errors in here. I'm going to get that. But anyways, there you go. Fa made right in the beard kitchen. So stay tuned for the next episode. I'll show you how to bake a loaf of bread with pretty much flour and water, nothing else. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, little cooking show today and take care you guys. I'll see you soon.